area where things have been hotting up in the last little while has um has come out and written to the UN to discuss with them what America's been doing in Syria and how much it's cost the Syrian people. So this was reported in Sputnik International and it's Syria reveals the staggering cost of US looting and sabotage of the energy sector. It goes on to explain that the United States is occupying a third of Syria still to this day has plundered billions of dollars worth of oil and food from the war-torn country in an attempt to suffocate Damascus into submission economically after the failure of the CIA war to topple the Assad government. So if people aren't aware or, or don't recall, um, they basically surrounded Aleppo, both insurgent fighters and the um, Americans and the the, the Turkish as well, and they had um, they'd surrounded Aleppo. Assad called for help from the Russian Federation, and they were pushed back to one third of the country, which they still occupy. There's been there's been great pressure both on Turkey and America to leave the occupied part of northeast Syria where they are, and they have refused again and again and again. They, they reckon that the US, and for, US forces and their tools have now reached a staggering 115.2 billion. And this includes direct attacks on the Syrian oil sector by looting, waste and burning of oil, theft of between 100,000 and 130,000 barrels a day of oil, and this has increased in the last few months. Um, theft and wastage of gas and domestic gas resources. Um, and they've done this so that they can attrit the Syrian people so that they can cause such a significant decline in living standards that people are unable to continue living in Syria. The letter goes on to say that they use um, Iraq and their bases in Iraq as a way of getting this oil out as well as their friends in Turkey. And um, it really does point a picture, point the finger at these American armed force bases that are dotted around the world and what it is that they're actually doing. I'd like to remind people, which this article doesn't, that when the awful earthquake hit Syria and Turkey, um, the Americans did nothing to provide aid for the people, even of the occupied part of Syria that they were in. They absolutely blind refused to do so. And what this meant was aid was struggling to get through from Turkey, was struggling to get through from Russia. The Americans were blocking aid trucks because what they want is a destabilised and a poverty-ridden Syria because that's easier for them to control and they can show in you know individual or grassroots levels of terrorism which happens when people are living in poverty as an example of why they need to be there protecting syrian interests um the war was very much lost you know by the us and the the, the turkish forces and nato i mean there were british forces there as well um it was it was lost many years ago and yet they will not leave. They are causing huge strife. Um, it also talks a little bit about Iraq. We need to look at Iraq and, um, and America's relation, very similar to how the French have treated Africa. So the Americans have gone in, they have monetized, they've taken the monetary system, they've created a monetary system for Iraq, it's owned by America, the Iraqis have to ask for their own money back, the Iraqis do the business, they do the trade, they get the oil, they barrel it up, they sell it, but the money doesn't go to them, it goes to America, they might get 20% of it if they're lucky, the rest of it is held by America in trust, and what this means is that Iraq can't even rebuild after, obviously, the huge bombing campaigns that happened there. Um, in the early 2000s, the late 90s. So I, it's very, very difficult to see what's happening here. And I'm very, very glad that Syria has spoken to the UN 
because they need to be made aware of of simply how hypocritical it is that America wish for Russia to be sanctioned and to be, you know, internationally uh, rejected from world trade and from diplomacy and sports and everything else. Because actually this is this is something the Americans are doing without anywhere near the reason and have been in the Middle East for a long, long time and are still doing. But really what I want to do is I want to ask Americans who might be watching this, has it helped you? Have you noticed billions more money being flooded into your country? Have you noticed the infrastructure being improved, the colleges, the the schools, yada, yada? We know that the Americans are doing this. We know that they're using tax-funded American military budgets to do this. So who is getting the benefit from this? Who's achieving anything? Because when I look around at the West at the moment and I see schools falling down and I see women not able to afford having kids and roads falling apart and people not being able to live and then I look at what our governments are doing abroad, it becomes very, very clear that we are working to pay taxes to fund armies that are essentially being used as private military companies for a very few elite select people and they're the only ones making money from this. So this is actually something we should all stand up and be livid about. This is not just robbing Syria, which would be bad enough. This is actually robbing all of us and we we need to stand up and, and acknowledge that and say no more. Syria, where things have been hotting up, 